Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Hey everybody, today we're going to do a tape-up review of the brand new Verifier 1 to 350 scale USS Atlanta. And I got to tell you, we've got a winner. The engineering that went into designing the cast for this model were just superb. The fit is just exquisite. In some places, you don't need to do any seam work when you put the parts together. It is a great kit. The instructions are first rate and very detailed, and you get a color sheet. I bought the deluxe version, and along with all of the photo etch that you need to build up this model into a museum showpiece, you get an additional set of instructions in color that show you how to use all the photo etch parts. In addition to that, they even give you turn brass masts and yard arms. And for those of us who like to rig our ships, that's a definite plus. So what we're going to do today is we'll go over some of the gluing tips and assembly tips that I worked on. Then we'll do the tape up and then we'll go directly to the scans of the parts. So stay tuned. The hull comes in two halves and there are a set of alignment spacers which uh, are perfectly engineered so that when you place the deck on the deck onto the hull it's a nice tight fit. The hull itself goes together very very well. Although you're going to have to do a little bit of seam work it's pretty tight. And even the bow is nice and tight. So the amount of seam work you're going to have to do here is minimal. Uh, how I assembled the hull was I taped it together and I had positioned one side of these uh, spacers in place with some tape and then uh, once the hull was taped together I kind of spread it out a little bit and popped the other one in place. So once I got it all set up uh, I checked the fit of the main deck and uh, lo and behold it just fit perfectly and I'll show you just how tight that fit is in a few minutes and then um, <clears throat> what I did was I glued one side of these spacers in place and then I double checked uh, the tape to make sure that everything was tight and then I ran a bead of super glue along the inside of the seam area all the way from the stern to the bow. You're going to have to hold the stern uh, halves tightly together when you glue them but just a tiny drop of super glue and hold it for about 10 seconds and you're done. So uh, the hull is just uh, incredibly well engineered and there's a lot of really nice detail on this on this hull. And then uh, once I was finished I went ahead and and held the sides together tightly and then glued each one of these spacers on on the other side and that's all you need to do. So uh, it came out pretty good and uh, the engineering on the hull assembly is exceptional. The main deck attachment to the hull is incredibly tight. Got a little bit of seam work back here to do, but uh, other than that, it's just a well-engineered kit. And you've got a tiny bit of seam work to do at the bow. Once the deck is glued down and it's primed, you can probably just fill that with a little bit of white glue and then contour it with the damp Q-tip. On the stern, what I found was if you attach the stern area first and position it and then work your way towards the bow, pushing down the deck onto the, there's like a little shelf on the inside of the hull that the deck sits on and it fits perfectly. If you go from the bow to the stern, you're going to have a slight problem with the fit. So I definitely recommend stern first and then work your way towards the bow. So the assembly of the forward superstructure is pretty straightforward. There are no uh, guide pins, alignment pins here. Instead you get 
these two internal braces that are supposed to position the left and right sides together, which are fairly large. <clears throat> the problem I had was this piece is too wide and it created a large separation here, so I didn't use it. What I did do was I ran some tape across the front and then I positioned this separate part back here, ran some tape across here, and then got this part set. You can see where I had put a piece of tape. I see right there you can see I put a piece of tape in there to get this position correctly and then I taped down uh, this deck piece and this deck piece. I had to make some adjustments to the tape. I got everything nice and tight and trued up right and then I started gluing. I glued I glued, got to move things around here, I glued this seam right here first in here, then I glued this piece together right back here, uh, and then I glued uh, this internal structural component in place, and then ran beads of super glue around the inside of the lips where the deck meets the superstructure sides, and uh, it came out really, really nice. And this forward seam is so tight that all you need to do is just a little bit of sanding and you're done. And again, I, I just glued everything from the inside and uh, it came out really, really nice. The upper forward superstructure has got several parts to it. It's got a left and right half and then it's got a separate front half, but it's got two positioning pins. So how I assembled this was I ran a piece of tape back here and I put this forward piece in place and ran a piece of tape around here to hold it in place and then what I did was I taped there are two separate deck sections the forward deck section and the aft deck section and I taped those in place and I made some adjustments to the tape and then I glued everything together I started with the positioning pins glued those together ran a bead of super glue right back here on this seam here and then uh, right back up here I would put a little bit of super glue and then ran some <clears throat> beads of super glue all along the inside of this area here and uh, it came out pretty good the last thing I did was the roof on on this forward pilot house is separate and that's that part I did last so positioned it in place and then ran a bead of super glue in here and uh, it came out pretty good <clears throat> the parts all fit together very well and the tolerances are just incredibly tight. So the aft superstructure <clears throat> consists of two main sections. There's a section here and here and they kind of snap together right in this area here. And the tolerance is so tight that um, the seam here and the seam here, there's nothing you need to do. It's that tight. So <clears throat> then I glued this piece in place and it was nice and tight and its seam is covered by uh, these two protrusions right here. This seam right here from this small part is so tiny that you can probably fill that with a little bit of Elmer's glue and contour it with a damp Q-tip after it's been primed and that should take care of that. There are two other parts and what I did was I, I did these separately. Um, I put the deck down and taped it down really, really tight, and then I glued this piece in place by running a tiny bead of super glue along here. So when I glue this part in place, <clears throat> I'll use a tiny bit of Elmer's, I mean a tiny bit of uh, Tester's glue right here and along the inside here so that I have a little bit of working time. <clears throat> and once that part is dry and it's, it's solid and in place, I'll push this back just a little bit and you can see that when I push it back, the seam along here and on this side just disappear. The engineering is just superb. So uh, that's how I'll assemble this. And um, it, I, I just can't say enough good things about the way these superstructure parts come together on the forward section, the midsection, and the aft section. <clears throat> the Mark 37 bases are a bit of a challenge. The, the base consists of three parts and uh, you can see the three parts right here. One, two, 
three. And so what I did was uh, I put a piece of tape across one of the parts, laid it on my workbench with the tape spread out this way, and then laid the second part in and rolled it, <clears throat> got it positioned, and then rolled it again to the third over the third part, and then ran the tape all the way around it, and then I was able to adjust it to get a nice round shape. Uh, then what I did was I put the top on, and the top fits very snugly in here and helps uh, provide a better shape to it, and I taped it. And then uh, you can run some beads of super glue on the inside here. On this one, what I did was, just to see how hard it would be to fix this seam along the outside here, I ran a tiny bead of super glue on, on each one of these seams, and I was able to get in there and sand and scrape each one of these seams fairly smooth. They're almost impossible to see. So I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but it actually turned out pretty good. So let me make an adjustment here so you can see. There's one seam. That dark straight line is the super glue. And here's another seam, which you really can't see very well. And here's the third seam. So uh, now, if this doesn't work for you, there's another solution. Get some 516s evergreen tubing, which is almost exactly the same diameter and go ahead and measure it and cut it and glue the top on it and you're done you don't have to do any seam work so <clears throat> this is an alternative solution and um, it'll work for you real well if you want to do a little bit of detail working just put one of those uh, the uh, photo etch hatches that come with this <clears throat> kit and just put it here and it'll look just fine once it's painted the torpedo assembly consists of several components you've got the bottom which fits together perfectly onto the framing of the torpedo tubes and then this top piece here is a right side a left side a top and then there's an internal brace that glues to the inside and then glues to the base you really don't need to glue that inside piece to the base glue the left Glue these two sides together with some testers red tube glue so that you can adjust the fit and get it nice and round, pop the top on, glue that in place, and then glue this whole assembly on top of the torpedo assembly, and uh, you're done. So uh, it came out pretty good. There is a seam here, and I think you can see it more on this side right here. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. If you try to sand that smooth, you're going to ruin all of this ridge detail. Here are the parts for the torpedo tube assembly. The 1.1 inch anti-aircraft guns that U.S. Navy used at the beginning of the war were not very good, but uh, anyway, in the kit here, there's three parts to this. you got the base, the frame, and then the gun itself. What I did was I used tiny drops of Tester's red tube glue to glue the two legs to the base, and then once that was dry, I was able to glue the gun to the upper part of the frame here. After it's after the uh, tester's glue is all dry, just put tiny drops of super glue in the gluing locations and that'll tighten it up and make for a real strong bond. By using the tester's glue, it allows you to rotate the gun a little bit if it's off-centered, because these are very, very small parts and it's very easy to get them out of kilter. So you'll have a little bit of adjustment time on this if you use uh, the tester's red tube glue. These are the three parts for the 1.1 inch anti-aircraft guns. The 5 inch 38 mounts go together very well. There are several parts to them. There's a forward right side, a forward left side, uh, a front piece here on the bottom. There's a, a base and the barrels are connected to a rod. So, uh, and the barrels sit on a cradle inside the base so you can actually position it <clears throat> either down or up, which is kind of a nice, uh, nice thing to have. <clears throat> when, um, when I first assembled one, uh, I, had, uh, I had a problem with the assembly. This bottom piece didn't fit well because there were two positioning tabs that were in the way. What I, the mistake I made was that this part is supposed to be reversed. This small protrusion should be pointed down. 
And if you do that correctly, what you get is a perfect fit for this bottom base. So uh, this one came out pretty good. The other mistake I made was on the, on the rod that holds the barrels, there are two holes on the bottom. And if you, if you glue the rod with the holes pointed up and you position the guns in a position like this, you're going to see those holes. So that's why I had to put this one at such a high elevation. So again, two things, the holes point down and this slight protrusion points down. And uh, if you follow uh, those two uh, pointers, the uh, five inch 38 mounts go together pretty well. These are the six parts for the five inch 38 twin mounts. In closing out uh, the video section of the uh, tape up review, I did want to mention something that I hadn't noticed before on the very fire kits, but I'm going to move this real close and show you that the, the ends of the tree attachment points are V-shaped and the, where it touches the part is so minute that all you have to do is just properly position your snippers and snip the part off and there's almost no cleanup associated with any of the parts. Just a little bit of sanding here and there. Uh, I was really impressed with how they diligently used these minute attachment points. They must have used very high pressure in order to get the plastic into the mold areas where the parts were. But um, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. I hope you enjoyed the assembly tips and now it's time to view the tape up. Verifier did a really good job of capturing the rake and the lines on the Atlantic class cruisers. The hull plating detail is very petite and almost to scale. Now let's step in a little bit closer to get a better look at some of the detail. And now let's get really close so you can see some of the superb surface detail on the superstructure sides. Now we'll start with the scans and we'll do the deck first, then move on to the hull, some of the large superstructure parts, and then the trees.
I scan both sides of each parts tree so that you can see all of the detail that's been incorporated into this great kit on both sides of the parts. Some of the trees in this kit are also common to their Cleveland class cruiser kit. The four photo wet sheets are full of details and all of the railings are included. They even included turn brass barrels for the 1.1 inch guns. The nameplate is a nice piece of etched metal. Here are two examples of the extensive instructions and you can see how well they're illustrated. The color sheets for the photo etch detail parts are actual photos. The deluxe kit even includes paper masks for airbrushing. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tape up that we did on this beautiful kit as well as all of the gluing and assembly tips. With that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. Visit our website if you get the chance at www.mikeashey.com and happy scale modeling. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashey.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!